winter's coming to Texas and I'm starting to get, you know, a little paranoid about another uh, grid collapse like we had last year. So it's wheels. They had, uh, you know, pneumatic tires and they just completely rotted away. I'm going to try putting some solid core tires on it. So my dad found these, uh, you know, flat free solid core tires and they had a different uh, bearing in it that didn't fit the shaft of the generator. So, I mean, we just popped out the bearings from the, the old tires and, and, you know, we're going to install those. But we got to get these out. They don't come out totally damage free. <laughs> They're in there pretty good. You got to pound them out. All right, so a uh, one inch socket fits right in here. Real nice. I'm going to try to use that to drive this out. Now historically, when you're using a tool the wrong way, you always opt for the Craftsman tool because, you know, it, it's a it's a pretty hassle-free warranty for when you break it, and uh, that's always nice. Let's see. I don't know if this plastic hammer is what I want. Let's see what happens. Very nice, easy peasy. So I guess we'll just go ahead and drive these old ones in. There's one done. So we're on the second wheel now. I'm just gonna do some love taps with a, <laughs> a hammer. Very nice. Then we'll go back to the socket. Right, let's see about getting this one installed. All right, so the dust cap only fits on one one side of this, so that side gets the dust cap, and uh, you know, one side's deeper than the other. So I'm gonna put the deeper one on the back side. Guess we get a wider wheelbase this way. Get that cotter pin in. Yeah. We're mobile. Nice, now we can get to the business end of things. So this thing has a total of seven hours on it. It was, you know, purchased out of uh, an abundance of caution and then never used. And the, I put all those hours on it, running a welder off of it. Let this work. So when I got my hands on it, all the rubber was rotten off and the diaphragm and the fuel pump was, uh, was busted. So I, I uh, stole a fuel pump from a different mower. This is a couple years ago now though. I'm gonna have to test it, see if it's still good or not. But then I, I, uh, I didn't have any fuel lines. So I put on these, these silicone hoses and they've all gotten real hard. So definitely need to replace all that with uh, some real fuel line. I need a filter, looks like I've lost the filter or stole it for a different project. All right, let's get under here and get where we can disconnect this old fuel line from the carburetor. I got this off. Let's see, how's that vacuum hose connect to things? Ooh, that's been all taped together. So it's broken somewhere. Oh, there's leaves under here. I think there's a rat nest. All right, so this was repaired with uh, tape. I must have done that a couple years ago and forgot about it. But we'll just tape it up again. It's just the uh, crankcase vent. And we'll get rid of this rat nest. We can get to business. Oh yeah, look. See, it's a it's a a, a pecan that's been eaten. This was habitat. Oh man. Right there. Let's see if we can, oh, I picked a little tiny screwdriver. What a mistake. I'm gonna roll with it. I like pain, no. That's right, I gotta use these vice grip fingers. Get out of the way. Now this is where it gets its power from. It's powered by the, uh, 
vacuum inside the crankcase, I guess. Let's see if we can get that off. Should probably replace that little bit of hose too. Well, it's still flexible. That one might be fine. Look at this. This hose was connected like this, right? And the end of it was kind of gross. But but some bug crawled all the way up and and made a little nest pack in the fuel pump. It's totally not much there. But still, that's rude. Let's check, okay, don't feel any obstructions. What if I can blow through this? No. So you can blow through, I'm putting my mouth on it, you can blow through the in and it comes out the out, but when you blow on the out, nothing happens. And so uh, I believe that means the diaphragm is intact and I can indeed use this thing. So that's good. Got some brand new hose here. I'm just going to go ahead and rig this part up. So these hoses, they're supposed to fit tight. And you got to really push them on. Like that. All right, so I got a hose clamp here. I might need to reshape it. It's a little bit out of round. I wonder if I can get it. Yeah, I got it on. Good, good, good. Get it right below the fat part there and angle it in a way you can reach it and then tighten it up. Oh God, I picked a small screwdriver. That's <laughs> a short one again. Uh, I don't want to walk three feet to the truck. Uh, don't make me do it. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Real screwdriver. Nice. It's tight. Don't go too tight or you strip it out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slap this fuel pump back on, let it be what it is and give it a test before I uh, I condemn it for any reasons. I'm glad I, I opened it up and saw that there's that clog there. So we got that out of the way now. Tighten that up just a bit. Okay, now I'm gonna struggle <laughs> to cut this for a second. I'm just gonna, I don't have a razor blade in my toolbox. I took it off this off of my, my blade, to, I took the blade out to scrape something and never put it back in. So let's just struggle with this. Oh God, whatever, it's too late. That's how long it's gonna be. Nice. So I got a fuel filter and some more fuel line. This section needs the uh, 5 sixteenths, is that what that? Yeah, 5 sixteenths fuel line. And then this is the one quarter inch uh, fuel line over there. So let me just get this hooked up and then we can actually see if we're still running or not. You know, it's uh, this is just the work to get to so we can test and see if, if it's gonna do something for us. I believe the way it ran was under there and through this hole. Then we'll figure out how much of this we want to have dangling here for the fuel filter. I was just sitting there watching the stove video. Oh yeah? They're just quirky as hell. <laughs> What's it? Well, <laughs> I don't know. It's how you, you hide ignorance of uh, what you're doing, I believe. Let's see. I'm just going to dangle it here. We'll cut that one right there. Cut this one around there. Yeah, dude, I'm going to be cold. I just know two ways about it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's uh, 10, 10 some real numbers. Oh. Where did you go to buy your stuff? I just went to O'Reilly's. They got things. What do you think of the new hardware store? Oh, dude, I really like like it. I went in there for uh, some window glazing the other day for, for that house, and they hooked me up. They had a lot of people out sick, though, but so they weren't sure if they had anyone there that knew how to cut glass. But one guy, he's like, oh, I can do it. He did good enough. He was off by, like, oh, an eighth of an inch, but... Did you offer 
I was gonna offer to do it because I got a big uh, wall-mounted glass cutter, which is. Uh, mom, what are those? They're sperm. They're my new glass project. Do you like them? I, I think they'll be popular with your old lady friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Then they will hire you. Ooh. You'd be in a quandary. Oh no. How can I be a bum and an employee? So little rubber pieces like this, they're not easy to come by same day. Uh -huh. So I wind up taping them up and whatever. Yeah. And saying I'll do better in the future. But you know, that's <laughs> next time. Next time we'll do a, a proper repair on this. Well, but it, it's broken again, so I'm just gonna tape it one more time. We'll get some better tape. Now this is good tape here. So there's still a big leak here, but uh, whatever. Can't do anything about that today. See, that's broken mm -hmm. up top. Oh my God, now these feel good. Or maybe I'm just not tight yet. There's no way they could all be stripped. That's my imagination. Oh, I forgot a part. Oh my God. Okay, do it again. All right, with the right parts on. Got to put it back together the way you found it, right? What batteries does have? It uses a lawnmower battery. Mm -hmm. Just to... You gonna bypass it? Yeah, I'm just gonna jump it. Okay. I don't want to put a lot of gas in here because I just want to run it out mm -hmm. of gas, make sure it runs. Mm -hmm. And it has a straw that, that goes to the bottom of the tank from up here, so mm -hmm. it has to siphon out. So this is sort of the lower corner, you know, on the hill it's sitting on. And then priming it sometimes takes forever to get the gas up and over. Oh yeah. And if the pump's in bad shape, it might not prime by itself. We'll see if we can do this with just a, a bit of gas. All right, so I got it hooked up to my truck. Jump it off. I don't remember if I had uh, ran it out of gas two years ago or not. Yeah, I might need to go through the carburetor, but we'll try a little, another little squirt. Well, it quit smoking. Uh, it had flipped over a year ago or so and uh, and got some gas in some weird places, I guess, but it's burned all that out. I'm just gonna let it run until it's out of gas and then uh, stow it away. And it'll be ready for this weekend when we have the 10 degree weather in case the Texas grid decides to collapse. Uh, let's keep going. So this isn't a generator, but this is a battery box that I built to run, you know, charge cell phones, 
run my CPAP, you know, various things. It's a lithium ion battery pack. And so part of the prep for uh, this possible winter storm, which it doesn't look like it's going to be as bad. I'm like 99% sure everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. Part of the prep is I'm going to uh, make sure this thing is charged up. I built these two cells. I got a whole video on, on building this, but I'm just going to... Let's see. Where does the charge come from? Those two connect to here. So here is my union of these two packs. I have these labeled as uh, max 16.8 volt, 12 amps per per thing. I've been charging to like 16.2. So let's just uh, check the voltage here. We'll see where we are. We're at 15.88, and I've only been charging them up to 16.2. So they haven't lost any power since my last camping trip. So that's good. Let's uh, get rid of the alligator clips and we'll put the, uh, what is this, uh, XT60 plug on here. So first I'm just going to set my voltage. I'm going to set the voltage to, so I'm just going to noodle that down to 16.25. How about that? We'll bump it up a bit since last charge maybe. Whoop. What? It totally doesn't matter at that tiny bit of difference. And then we'll plug it in. It's putting in 6 amps, which it can totally take, but just to keep the batteries cool, since I'm not in a, uh, in a hurry, I'll just, you know, a couple amps or so. And we'll just let that kind of slowly charge itself back up. This system is pretty simple. The, the chemistry of the lithium ions doesn't quite get you to like 12 volt systems. So I put in uh, a voltage regulator. This is, oh my God, my terminology's killing me right now. But, but it's some sort of buck converter. And it just has a little dial and you dial in the voltage you want. And it's probably set like 12.4 volts or something. Just to, just to make sure that, that, you know, if I did charge it to 16.8, it's not giving 16.8 volts to something that might not be able to handle it. And uh, it's got an on-off switch, and then the power goes down to the back side where, where uh, you can plug in with one of those cigarette lighter-style ports. But the last winter storm, it was kind of a big deal. I mean, we had, uh, like multiple days of of well below freezing temperatures our uh, power plants you know our natural gas power plants they weren't winterized and like the the pipes that that bring in the natural gas to the plants they were just freezing solid and they couldn't you know <laughs> unfreeze them and so there was no fuel getting delivered to the power plants we wound up having rolling blackouts and and uh you know like i think i think some some poor kid froze to death and you know i don't think many people died from this one but but there's definitely a report that i read of a kid freezing to death in his trailer and i mean it's just it's tragic it was terrible so you know just out of an abundance of caution now that we know that the the texas grid doesn't always uh perform as the most reliable grid on the planet right uh that it can in fact leave you high and dry in your greatest need. You know, just just a little easy preparedness. That's all I'm talking. So I have this to charge devices, run my CPAP. This could probably run my, my CPAP and charge devices for I don't know, five days or a week. I don't know. It's it's the it, it's it's quite a bit of power in here, you know, for, for small devices. That generator probably could run the well out at my dad's land. Uh, never tried it. You know, bought that thing for Y2K for that purpose. Never did it. But back to the lithium-ion charging for just a second before we go back out and put this uh, generator away. So, so you set the voltage that you want the final charge voltage to be, and and then you know you actually flow current into your batteries. You know, so these these amps, the two amps going in there, it'll slowly start to creep up the voltage of the battery pack. And then once the battery pack is at the voltage that you you set it at, it, it maintains that constant voltage while the uh, the the amps 
as they meet more resistance in the battery, slowly start to go down and down and down. And you can charge you know, all the way down to to uh, like a, a tenth of an amp or something if you want to, and then call that fully charged. So so bulk charging is uh, the the rapid charging. We can get eighty percent in a pretty quick period of time. That's the the act of bringing the battery packs voltage up to the number that you want to charge it to. That's the bulk charge. And then that final 20% charge that takes forever because you're limited by the, the, the amount of electricity the batteries will allow into them, the, the internal resistance of the batteries. That's the part that takes forever. That last 20% is what can take, you know, overnight or something to happen. So, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty simple setup and having a power supply to, to play with batteries like this and in my last video I did some electroplating of nickel you know it's 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 been fun it's been fun having a power supply in, in my little shop here but anyways let's get back to winterizing uh, <laughs> winterizing just just making sure that the generator will be ready to go if we need it and then taking it up to the barn and putting it in storage uh, I want to put a little bit of oil in here for storage uh oh god can i even get this off these haven't come off in like 22 years or whenever it got bought oh god all right well survived that's good so i'm going to put oil inside of the uh, combustion chamber just in case we decide to stow it away for another 20 years <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay, good. Coming out nice and easy. That's a very good thing. Make sure this will flow some oil. Okay. Yeah. Bloop. Okay, a bit of oil. I'm gonna do it to the other side. Then I'm gonna turn it over and just let it splash it around. Then I'll put the spark plugs back in. And then that will hopefully prevent, you know, rust and things from happening inside the engine. Turn it over a bit. All right, I'm gonna call that good. It's hard to believe it's, you know, like 75 degrees today. I'm starting to sweat because I have pants on and we'll be 10 degrees by the weekend. But that's a Texas winter. All right, not too crazy tight. So cool. All These wheels work pretty good. What if they'll fit? No, fit under there. Got to find a place for it uh, to live. About right here. Just tuck it in out of the way. Let's see if I can get these pins out. And just fold that handle down. Nice. All right. Well, this is packaged up pretty nice. Uh, probably could set a board on it to protect the, the tarp material from getting a hole in it, but this is in the back of the barn, away from the weather. There's no gas in it. it has oil in the, uh, in the combustion chamber. Maybe, maybe it's good to go for another 20 years sitting without use, or maybe we'll need it this weekend to survive. We'll see. <laughs> 